Hey everybody, welcome to another video. Today we're going to do sort of a week recap of what's happened and what everything that's currently going on is going to lead to in the future. The first area I want to start with is Bakhmut because that's where the most has been happening recently. I missed my upload yesterday because I was hanging out with some friends, but the Ukrainians have fully liberated Klitschivka and Andrivka. It was already great progress because it means that the Ukrainians had degraded the Russian firing positions enough to move into these areas, but the most important thing is that they breached the rail line in the region. Let me draw it out really quick because it's like impossible to see on this map. The rail line follows this red line that I've drawn right here, and as you can see, Ukraine has breached it in two different areas. This crossing was really important because the Ukrainians basically destroyed the Russian 72nd Brigade in this area, and now they're going to be able to set their targets further down the line. There's still a small gray zone between, uh, the north the east of Klitschivka and the direction of the railroad right here but if the railroad gets breached in too many places the Ukrainians will be able to clear it parallelly which is going to make it harder for the Russians to maintain defense and probably just have to retreat from the whole thing this is the last thing that the Russians want right now. They don't want any more breakthroughs in the direction of Bakhmut or anywhere else that Ukraine has been pushing as you can see they need all their reserves to try to stop the breakthrough south of Orihiv, which day by day is slowly unfolding. But the problem is, this is going to lead to a major problem for the Russians. The Ukrainians are solidifying their positions on their side of the railroad now, and it seems like they've already picked out their next two targets. It's likely that Kurdyumivka and Zelenopilia are going to become a big target here, because if they're able to establish control of this hill, this gives them a very good tactical overlook of pretty much everywhere else in the area. Once they can push to the Bakhmut River by Mykolaivka Druha, it's going to be way easier to roll down this hill in the direction of Opetne because of the height advantage that they'll have from the heights by Klitschivka and south of here. And even if the Ukrainians can just reach Opetne, that puts Bakhmut in a very difficult spot. The Russians will need to hold the Bakhmutovka River, which goes down this way, and if they if they allow the Ukrainians to cross through there, then Bakhmut is pretty much going to be encircled from this side. And if the Russians lose Bakhmut, that is just going to be the most bitter... That, I was about to say bittersweet there's nothing sweet to that at all that's just gonna suck for them and right now the ukrainians are just focusing on pushing past this rail line and joining these two fronts and maybe adding another assault through on drivka that's not an arrow adding another assault through on drivka as well the second target and probably the best settlement to go for in here is just to push from on drivka to odrivka because that would split the russian segments on the bakhmutovka river in two which would allow ukraine to divide up their forces and take out different areas even easier and that's what we got right there and the the worst part about the whole thing is that the russians will have to bring in reserves from another area which is just going to weaken the overall security of the front i'm about to talk about how the ukrainians pushed by avdivka and opetne and that's mostly because the russians had to pull troops off of there to go support the south and because ukraine made progress that had to lead to them pulling troops from the north into avdivka which is just going to weaken the north even more so we may see another sort of offensive and right now, this is just a game of reserves and allocation, because both sides have about equal manpower, in numbers on the field at least, because Ukraine has a lot of reserve brigades that they haven't fully committed to combat yet, so their numbers just grow by the day, and it's going to be an interesting race to see what happens. On the topic of Avdivka, this is where a big Ukrainian uh, counterattack happened. Before I talk about this, I want to talk about how just like impenetrable Avdivka is. Nine years of fighting took place across these trenches right here, and these are pretty much like you just cannot break through these the russians don't even try to attack these trenches anymore they are just that good which led to them trying to flank avdivka by pushing in vodyne and krasnohorivka this may be slightly inaccurate but the pre-war line was i think like here i that could be wrong the russians made some gains earlier in the war north of Donetsk city eventually taking over bakhmutivka and krasnohorivka but the problem was the Ukrainians can take in supply from Umanske through uh, or Orlivka and then into the back of Avdivka. And the Russians got stuck outside of Stepova and the Ukrainian- actually this map's not right. The Ukrainians retook the hill on the edge of Krasnohorivka which made the Russian advance in this area pretty much impossible. But for the south, the only real way to cut supply to Avdivka would to be to break through here and take Semenivka or Orlivka. Shut up, bro. God. Or to push up from Vodyne in the direction of Orlivka. God damn, bro. Leave me alone. Why'd I put a reminder on my phone that just said shave your nuts, bro? And the Russians took the second option of trying to push from Vodyne to Orlivka. I remember earlier in January, there was a big battle for Severne, which is a very critical settlement in this area. 
the Ukrainians were able to push them back about to this area by Vodyne. But now that the Ukrainians have pushed them all the way back to Obyne, any assault in the direction of Shaverne is, whoops, it's going to get flanked by the positions over here, which is going to make it harder and make them so they have to re-advance out in Obyne this way to go back. Because advancing north of Obyne, they have this river to sort of cover their tracks. They also did a counterattack by Perovomysk and uh, Nevelske. This is just showing that the Russians really did understaff this area by moving uh, their equipment all the way down to Zaporizhia. So yeah, we'll see how this develops. I, I don't think there's, there's not going to be some like massive counterattack that retakes Donetsk city or anything. I'm going to briefly cover um, this. The Ukrainians pushed the Russians back to the river by Pavlivka south of Vulodar. This is just a small improving move which will free up some troops to go to some other areas. Now the next area which is uh, probably the most important right now that I want to talk about is the south. The Ukrainians managed to liberate the entire left fortification by Robotine. These are the main things stopping Ukraine from advancing under Nova Prokopivka, but Ukraine has fully captured the one on the left now. They're also pushing in the direction of Kopani to free up the supply road to flood more troops into this area. This has been going really well with them overrunning a couple of Russian trenches and making good progress. If a trench is like, if it's built like this, attacking it this way is a lot harder than attacking it this way, and by taking Robotine, this allows the Ukrainians to take the trenches parallel. That's the main gist of the movement down here. The Ukrainians are getting very close to the second defense fence line they've already breached it north of verbove but now they're at a point where they are like up to the line south of verbove too this map's a little inaccurate and they're very close to the south it's even closer than this map is depicting how about i fix it instead of saying it's broken yeah that's mainly what i got here all right last thing i would have forgot about this if i didn't put the big words right here i think it's kind of obvious that the ukraine uh, zelensky is heading over to the u.s sometime soon i think it's it's really soon and i think this is going to be when the u.s finally approves atacms for the ukrainians there's been a lot of talk about it and like biden's been dilly dallying on his choices and stuff but i think it's probably finally going to be delivered i don't know if you say this like attackums but i'm gonna say atacms so i'm not wrong but i'm also like not as right as i can be a lot of russians are already speculating that they have them inside of the country and they just can't use them until the u.s like announces the aid for it but once the ukrainians get atacms that's gonna really like blow shit up they have a 300 kilometer range so let's just overlay some of this that's all of crimea that includes the kerch bridge that includes rostov which is the most important thing being able to hit rostov on dawn would be huge they can hit voronezh <laughs> belgorod and kursk they can hit bryant's they're on the border of kaluga this already looks pretty nice and someone in the u.s government i don't know who it was they said it's when ukraine gets the atacms it's not our business what they do with them which i think is indicating that ukraine could probably hit military targets inside of russia the most important thing for the ukrainians will be able to strike bridges and different logistics centers in rostov on don because this is the main city that russia is relying upon to send stuff into ukraine the other big thing is being able to strike the kerch bridge if they need to because this is what largely supplies the Kherson and the melitopol part of the front line atacms could single-handedly change this entire war if they're able to do that can i like join these together that'd be so nice come on Come on. Oh my god. Yes. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Let me draw the high Mars ranges really quick just to explain what I was about to say. As you can see right here, the blue area is the high Mars range inside of occupied Ukraine. When the Ukrainians got high Mars, the Ru pretty much every Russian advance stopped because of logistics and they had to relocate all of their areas to behind the Russian lines. They had to take it to the coast like Mariupol, Berdyansk, and multiple different areas. Already with storm shadows, which Ukraine doesn't have a large number of the russian logistics have already become pretty disrupted but with atacms and this thick ass range right here it's going to become impossible for the russians to have good logistics in this area if the ukrainians are allowed to hit targets inside of rostov on don it's likely that moscow and volgograd themselves are going to have to become the main uh cities that supply the ukraine front because they're out of atacm's range that would severely delay russian logistics and equipment delays probably making stuff take one day which is enough for a big combat operation to reach a breakthrough one more thing the u.s government has said that the ukrainians are going to receive a larger amount of abrams than initially specified which i think was 31 so we're just going to see even more firepower hit in the front this raw recording is 24 minutes I, I don't know how i actually just waffled for that long but that's all i got that's a nice week recap and i'll see you guys later